Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Russia may be forced into a gold standard in order to save the ruble. Let's explore. Indeed, that is news that may be welcome for many of us out there, but when you think about the circumstances and how Russia has handled its currency before, um, it's not necessarily something to celebrate per se, especially the circumstances that will lead it to that uh, area. We know that the ruble is certainly suffering right now um, because of sanctions, and of course it is the to the celebrations of perhaps that some people feel this could essentially mean that uh, Russia being isolated, as most countries, in a sense, should take the same route. You know, there's something about sovereignty that I think it should be um, the lesson of the day here, because the globalist agenda is something that scares many of us, especially with regards to technology, ESG, that's environmental, social, and governance, and that is stuff that is becoming talked about and bantered about at the World Economic Forum and the like. And so in cases like this specific scenario, where you're seeing some of the policies, especially as of late with Russia, that many feel that the United States should be doing as well too. You know, instead of uh, you know, submitting to a, a globalist agenda, uh, we should be doing more to protect our own nation and our own people and the interest of our people. And I can understand that uh, that uh, mode of thinking. I have nothing against dealing with other nations and trade uh, with the world, but I think it should be bilateral trade with other nations and, uh, and the like. But nonetheless, that's sort of a separate argument here because we can see now here that uh, Russia has all of this gold. And you've heard this channel and others talk about the procurement of gold by these nations to protect themselves for a lot of the very reasons that have been discussed about, and especially with what's happening right now with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And that is the case right now. And no one not only wants to buy it, but not only that, but not many people can buy it. You know, there is this uh, talk that Russia will sell its oil for under market price. Likely they would do the same for with gold. So gold under spot, but you'd be buying it from Russia. And do you want to do that? Or are you allowed to do that? They're the fifth largest stockpile of gold in the world, belongs to Russia. It's valued at about $140 billion. And sanctions are making it very difficult for Russia to trade this precious commodity. More than likely, these things will be occurring um, and with other nations that aren't necessarily friendly to the United States, mainly uh, Russia, or mainly China, and perhaps some other smaller nations, and maybe even India. Because India has taken a uh, stance that is more neutral in this scenario. Like the price of crude oil, gold prices have been on a wild ride since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. And like oil, Russia holds some of the world's largest reserves of gold, some 2,300 tons of it worth nearly $140 billion, according to this article here from businessinsider.com that was shared with me by Dr. Who. If you enjoy articles like this and videos like this where I cover the news topics and we're going to be referencing some stuff in this article that I had already talked about, I hope you will subscribe to the channel. And I want to send a huge thank you for those of you who do send articles like this my way. The huge reserves of the precious metal were built up over the past decade and a half, much of that chronicled on this channel, and were intended to be sort of an economic insurance policy for the country. But as with oil, sanctions are making it incredibly difficult for Russia to actually realize the value of its holdings. This is why they, they bought their gold. It was for a situation just like this, Cork University Business School lecturer Virgil O'Connor told Bloomberg. But if no one will trade it with you, it doesn't matter. Indeed, in fact, uh, I think that they probably weren't expecting this amount of pushback from the international community in this regard. Last week, London's gold marketplace, as I also chronicled, the most important center in the world of bullion, 
banned all bars from Russian refineries, effectively shutting it out of the global trade. <clears throat> the U.S. Senate followed that move with a new bill that would prohibit U.S. citizens from making any transactions that involves Russian gold. Another story that I chronicled on this channel. Russia's massive gold supply is one of the few remaining assets that Putin can use to keep his country's economy from falling even further, Maine Senator August King said in a statement. By sanctioning these reserves, we will further isolate Russia from the world's economy and increase the difficulty of Putin's increasingly costly military campaign. Even without international buyers, it appears domestic demand for gold is high, according to a statement from the Central Bank of Russia. Yet another story that I had chronicled on this channel. On Tuesday, the bank said it will suspend its regular purchases of gold from lending institutions so as to not compete with household demand at a time when people are racing to exchange crashing rubles for gold bars. But the ruble was down to a cent of ruble. Uh, then, you know, uh, you're going to need a whole heck of a lot of those in order to purchase those gold bars. If the currency continues to fall relative to the U.S. dollar, and it is, Credit Suisse strategist Zoltan Polzar told Bloomberg that the country could use the stockpile to effectively revert to a gold standard, using it as an anchor by selling it at a fixed price in rubles. So there you go. So that is probably the last option that Putin will have in order to save the ruble and keep the economy afloat is to use it, its gold reserves, Russia's gold reserves, to its advantage to back the ruble or to fix it to the ruble. And that way people will have the confidence that the ruble uh, is uh, valid and liquid because it's backed by the gold that they hold in their vaults. And you know, because I chronicled on this channel as well, that Russia does have that gold because they actually publicized uh, photographs uh, from their vaults to the gold that's in there. Uh, fascinating indeed. Um, and I believe in a sense we should do the same thing here. That we should have a transparent audit, a public audit of the gold that the United States Mint holds so that we can continue, especially considering the latest developments from Saudi Arabia, that they are considering strongly uh, going to uh, using the yuan in order to trade oil um, with them. But nonetheless, fascinating story indeed, is that this is where it is. If, if, uh, if Russia cannot liquidate its gold fast enough, or even if it can to certain nations, it may not be enough to save their ruble and to save their currency. Now, more likely, they are going to be forced into this situation to where they have to go on this gold standard in order to save the ruble. If that occurs, then it will be yet another example of the true value of gold put into practice by a nation, even though the reasons and the circumstances are quite extreme, as would be the case for Russia. It is something that could definitely work if done the right way. And there's many people who think that here in the United States that we will be forced to do the same thing, but for different reasons. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I believe there's more tricks up their sleeves. The first and foremost would be this great reset that is underway in order to be able to control um, the dollars spent with this ESG, which is bad news. Um, thank God for West Virginia, and I think uh, it's being proposed in some other states too, that will prohibit uh, ESG being a factor for monetary things. There ought to be an uprising against this ESG business. It's horrible. Bad news all around. But nonetheless, there it is. So that is the situation uh, with Russia and what they may be forced into now. And you think about it, uh, all of these Russians starting to rush to buy gold right now. And you have a nation like Turkey who, uh, by their culture, they have gold coins. And uh, because they don't trust the currency. They don't trust the currency. And, um, and they haven't trusted the currency for quite some time. It's always in trouble, always getting reset and the like. And so they have been doing the smart thing and buying gold per capita, more of them per capital capita than any other 
of, of nation of its size anyway. I think Switzerland, I think, is the largest ownership per capita of gold in, in, the, in the world, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember statistically uh, that information. But nonetheless, Turkey is certainly a model for gold holdings. And I think that you and I, and likely if you're watching this channel, you may have some gold. But if you are new to the channel or new to precious metals in general and you happen upon this video, it's a good idea why you should be your own central bank and have your gold holdings. Owning gold is a way to protect yourself against your own government and their own policies that essentially look to devalue the currency that is uh, circulating in your country. For us, it's the dollar, and it's under attack right now by inflation at a rate of 7.9% per year. So that is why I have been accumulating more gold uh, starting pretty heavily in 2017 onward and continuing to this day because I really strongly feel that gold is the ultimate safe haven, the ultimate store of wealth to protect against economic instability. And it has proven itself in real time in multiple different ways, uh, mainly by the nominal price a record being hit just a few weeks ago again after hitting that high uh, almost a year and a half ago. So there you have it. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Fascinating story indeed. Thanks again to Dr. Who for sharing this particular one with me. And I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.